Hello, my name is Sebastian Lifschitz. I'm at the Berlinale in the Panorama and I'm the director of Little Girl. Est-ce que vous, il y avait des choses que vous teniez à pouvoir dire aujourd'hui ou qui vous paraissaient importantes Quand j'attendais Sacha, je voulais vraiment une fille. D'accord. Voilà. Ok. Donc je me suis toujours demandé si ça n'avait pas une... Non. Hein, ça, on peut y répondre tout de suite. À l'heure actuelle, alors, le terme qui est utilisé, c'est la dysphorie de genre. Oui. Voilà. Le terme actuel pour en parler. Euh, on ne sait pas à quoi elle est due, la dysphorie de genre. On sait à quoi elle n'est pas due. Donc on sait que ce n'est pas euh, un souhait des parents, du papa ou de la maman, d'avoir un enfant de l'autre genre. Euh, c'est euh, une des craintes que les parents rapportent souvent. Hein, et euh, ça, on sait que ça n'a pas d'incidence. Ensuite, sur euh, l'apparition d'une dysphorie de genre, euh, on sait aussi que ce pas des erreurs que vous auriez faites ou quelque chose que vous n'auriez pas bien fait. Hein, ça, on peut tout de suite vous dire que ce n'est pas ça. Le pourquoi, on ne le connaît pas. Les choses sont comme ça, pour une raison qu'on ignore, mais les choses sont comme ça. Et, euh, tu n'es pas la seule pour qui c'est comme ça. On en voit d'autres, des enfants, dans cette situation. Hey, welcome to the Teddy TV. My name is Jean-Bor Bobak, and this time we are discussing the film Petite Fille with director Sebastian Lifschitz. Hi, welcome to the Teddy Award. It's lovely to have you back, actually. Um, so can you maybe start with telling us how did you get in touch with the protagonists, with this family that are at the, at the focus of of your film and how did you decide to to make this movie about them? Well, the story of the film uh, began when actually I, I met Bambi. Bambi was mm -hmm. one of the first French transsexual. Yeah. And I remember when I, I did a film about her life, she told me in a conversation that Bambi was born in the 30s, could you imagine, in the 30s, yeah. you know, so many years ago. But she said to me that at that time, when she was around three or four, she was totally convinced that she was a little girl. She was born as a boy, right. but she felt like she was a little girl. And in that time, it was impossible to speak about anything private, uh, I mean, the conversation were impossible about uh, intimacy or sexuality or whatever. And she was so brave, you know, to deal with this and to find a way to assume who she were and, and to become a beautiful woman. But then I realized that trans identity has nothing to do with uh, puberty, with adolescence, with sexuality. It's It has nothing to do with this, you know? Yeah. It's something that appears most of the time very early. And, um, and of course, I couldn't go back in the 30s, you know? And, yeah. and, and to shoot Bambi uh, when she was a little girl. So I had this idea that it could be great to make a film today of a, of a trans kid, but today, and yes. to see how it goes. How is it to be someone that is different from the sex uh, in which you were born. And so that was my idea. But then I had to find the kid, you know, yes. which is not so easy. Definitely. And you can't go to a school and say, hello, uh, I'm a director and yeah. I'm looking for a trans kid. It's impossible. So I had this idea to go um, on the forums where some parents exchange some, mm. some thoughts, some questions, because most of the time they are a bit lost yeah. with this experience, you know, it's something completely new and they have no idea of what's right. going on, you know. So they need to, to exchange and maybe to, to find some advice, some information also. Yeah. And so we put an announce in one of this forum And then two mothers answered, mm -hmm. one from Canada. Yeah. And she said to us, come to Canada, this is great here. We have no problem with trans kids, you know. You yeah. have everything you need. Uh, you could have doctors, you have... I mean, it's not an issue. Right. Uh, people understand. And, um, and kids are like 
great. Yeah. They have no problem. Yeah. And, but I was looking for someone in France. So, and then fortunately, the mother of Sasha uh, answered us saying that, okay, she was maybe interested, but first she needed to, to be sure of our intention, you know, yeah. what kind of film I, yes. I wanted to do and, um, and what person I, I am, you yeah. know. So I met her. And that first meeting was really, really intense because uh, the mother of Sasha is a really sincere and very deep person. Yeah. She's very emotional. Um, and I really loved her at first sight. You know, it's, yeah. she was really amazing. And I thought that she could be a very good character for, for a documentary film. And I think she, she thought that she could trust me. Uh -huh. yeah. And that was basically the, the, the beginning of the yes. film. Yeah. I mean, this is, of course, a very crucial question with, with, with this type of documentaries where somebody gets into the very intimate spaces of other people, this element of trust, but also from the side of the filmmaker, um, the consideration of documentary ethics, um, because you really get very close to these people. It's a very, very intimate what, uh, what comes to the screen and what is uncovered and, and showed to many, many people. So can you talk a bit about your, your approach to, to documentary ethics when, when you started to work on this, on this project and what were your main considerations? Well, my focus was to be very close to reality, uh, the most I could, you know, yeah. and really to be very true to them, you know, and, yeah. and to get something about their daily life yes. and also to be with them. It's not to be, it's not a subject, you know, mm -hmm. for me it's a documentary, it's always to, to share their life, yeah. to be a part of their intimacy and to be very close to them and to find the good distance which is something that you have to improve with time during, during the shooting, actually. Yeah. And I have this chance that the whole family was so caring with us and has accepted us so easily. You know, they, not only me, uh, my crew also, because yeah. it's very important. Um, we are a group and we have to make it together. So for me, a documentary film, it's, it's also, I mean, you have to, to document uh, the daily life yes. of the people that you're filming, but also you have to build a language. It's a film. Yeah. And it's not only a subject or whatever, you know, you have to, to find a language that is really a cinematic language yes. and so I'm always obsessed when I do a, a shooting about the good distance, the frame, also the editing. So, so you have to be very concentrated and to live the moment but in the same time you have to analyze what you're doing like every second. Yes. So it's a bit tricky but you have to be on both sides uh, every time. Yeah, definitely. And if we, if we talk about this, one thing that was very striking to me in the film is um, I think it is equally a story of Sasha, but also it's, it's also a story of this family unit yeah. whom, are, whom are very close together and they are very, very supportive of, of uh, Sasha's journey. Um, but the interesting thing for me was that there are moments in the film when uh, I think almost every family member get a moment in the film and they talk to the camera and they and they talk about their feelings and and um, and about this um, whole thing that they go through together as a family um, and the only exception is Sasha she, she is the only one who who doesn't have have this moment and I was wondering um, if there was a 
conscious decision behind that and, and why did you decide like that? Well, first of all, the, all the love that you can see in this family, which is really amazing, because there is a kind of solidarity and I mean, the power of love that you feel, you know, really when you are with them is really strong. And I think it's, it's all about Sasha because <coughs> probably because of Sasha's situation, the family has built a kind of shield uh, around her just to protect her. Right. That's why you have this feeling of uh, a so strong solidarity and love, you know. And uh, for me, it was really amazing. I felt like I was in a fairy tale most mm. of the time, like the house was a kind of bubble. Yeah. And um, so it was so pure to be with them and, and, and to film all these intimate moments, you know, they have all together. Yeah. But to answer your question, I mean, of course, they, each person of the family has a moment in the film, especially the mother. Yeah. The film is also a portrait of the mother. Yeah. Regarding Sasha, I didn't have to have a kind of talking head with her yeah. because you already have three. Because all the sessions with the pedopsychiatrist are in a way a kind of talking head. It's not That's me right. who are questioning her, it's a doctor, but it's the same in a way. And it's, um, so it happens in a different way, but I think it's more true for me and more yeah. interesting. Yeah. And also she's a little girl, you know, so sometimes she doesn't have the words, but you could read everything on her face. You understand her so deeply. Yeah. Everything is visible with Sasha. Just you look at her and you understand who she is, yeah. what everything about her, in a life, you know, you see it. Yeah. It's so, I was amazed with this, you know, the capacity of her to be so true, so sincere. And I remember also with the camera, she has a very strong conscience of the camera. Mm. For example, one day I asked her, can I go in your room with you? And can I film you playing with your toys? And I knew that the room, that her room, was a very, very important place for her. It's a secret place. Yeah. And nobody normally goes there because she has all her girly toys. It's her little kingdom, you know. Yes. And she said, yes, okay, you can come. So we put the camera there. And when we were ready, she just sat on the bed watching me, doing nothing. And I said, don't you want to play with your toys? And she said, well, no. And I said, but why? And she said, but because you're there. And normally when I play with my toys, I'm just alone in my room. And I said, yes, okay, but I mean, we're doing a film, you know, today. So maybe you can just play and, and we do the film. Yeah. And she looked at me and she said, no, I can't do that. And for me, that no was very important because she was telling me that she didn't want to be a comedian, that yeah. she didn't want to act, yes. you know, like she's going to play her life. Yeah. There was no way of that for that her, you that. know, yeah. that everything that she will agree to do was because it was a part of her life and because she was doing like concretely something, yes. but she didn't want to, to play something. She didn't want to play her herself in a way. And for me, that was a kind of, it was very important. It was a kind of guarantee that everything that I, I would film would be with her approval, you know, yes. and with her conscience that she was okay, you know, with it. Yeah. So that was really, really important for yeah. me. Yeah, I mean, that also comes through the film. Um, I was also wondering if you could tell us a bit about the whole um, infrastructure and bureaucracy around this process that they have to go through so that they would get this very crucial paper for the school um, that yeah, they have to treat Sasha differently because this is very, very 
toxic how it is right now for her um, because it seems like that this is a system that's very difficult to navigate for people. Many people can't really find a way inside yeah. to that. And it's almost, um, yeah, it's, it's just very, very difficult to get in there and to start it to begin with. So can you tell us a bit about, about that? I don't know how much you were involved with, with that process. Well, the school was really a very, very difficult place yes. uh, for the family, especially for Sasha. But on the other hand, the school was very important for Sasha because she has friends there, you know? Yeah. So she didn't want to change of school, of even if it was so difficult with the principal, with some teachers. And she has to find a way to be there and to be accepted, you know? Yeah. So it was, for the family, especially for the mother, it was a very strong fight. Yes. But then when the mother had this paper from the hospital saying that Sasha was um, a kid in dysphoria. Yeah. Uh, and also that she was really suffering, not to be considered as a little girl. Then the family, has a kind of power over the school, you know, yeah, to make them understand and to force them to accept definitely. the reality of Sasha. Um, so that was tricky, but then little by little, the school fortunately understood <coughs> that they had to, to make a big change right. with their behavior, you know. They had no other way um, because the law for them yes. to understand and to accept the situation as it is, you know. Right. But that's the story of the film, you know, that was this big fight between the yeah. school, not only the school actually, also yeah. the, conserv uh, the conserv uh, conservatory of dance, you know, where Sasha, yes. uh, she's having some lesson, you know, of dance because yeah. she loves to dance. Yeah. And they refused first, you know, to consider her as a little girl, you know. Yeah. And it was the same. It's a very conservative environment, you know, where she's living. Yeah. Uh, it's a little town in the province, and everything there is so conservative. So the family and Sasha, especially, has to fight with all these difficult mentalities, you know, yeah. that all around. And it's tough. Yeah. But. I think also for Sasha, she's learning how to fight because, yes. okay, she has battles right now, but she will have more battles. Sometimes she will win yeah. and sometimes probably she will she lose, wins. you know, yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. but then she's, I think, preparing herself uh, to assume who she is, you know, and, and, and to to be a kind of little warrior, yeah. you know? Yeah, let's talk a bit about, about this fight that she has to fight because uh, I think one of the most heartbreaking moments in the film is uh, when, the, when Sasha's mother talks about that uh, one night uh, Sasha herself questioned if there is a point in fighting at all. And that's extremely sad to hear, you know, when, when, when an eight-year-old child starts to question that because there are so many difficulties and so much hostility that uh, that she has to face from from the outside world um, so can you talk a bit about about this yeah this element of fight that I think it was also the mother who really reignited this flame in Sasha as well to to yeah keep on going and that there is a point and that we are here and we can do this together well, for me, the mother, she is a kind of hero. Yeah, certainly. She is a so strong uh, fighter. She has this unconditional love for her kids. And so she's ready for the fight, you know, like yeah. every time. But she's struggling, you know, and sometimes she's uh, also sad and she thinks that everything is impossible yeah. and she's also discussed you know with all this stupidity and this conservatism and she don't understand it you know she doesn't understand it 
And she tries to find a way to make people understand, to see how cruel is it, you know, not to, not to accept Sasha like she is. Because really, when you see her, I mean, it's so obvious that she's a little girl. Yeah. I mean, there is no other way to consider her as I don't know what, you know? Yes. She's a little girl. And I don't know what is the problem, actually. Mm -hmm. Just to respect and to consider her like she wants to be. Mm. Yeah. That's what, yeah. But you know, for religious consideration, for also, um, uh, in French we say, for um, lack of knowledge, you know. Yes. People have this uh, kind of attitude that are very intolerant. Yeah. And for them, it's it's a freak show, you know. They they don't get it. And but little by little, they had to understand. Yeah. And even if maybe deeply in themselves they refuse, you know, to consider Sasha as a little girl and to understand what is a trans kid, you know, they had to. Yeah. I mean, because you have this paper, you have the law that fortunately is, is, protect, is protecting you, you know. Yeah. But then you have to go through uh, all this medical process, you know. Exactly. Without, you have nothing, which is a problem also. For sure. And uh, so the film, it's about all this, you yeah. know. And yeah. I hope that the film will make people understand what is really uh, a trans kid, but not only a trans kid, what is to be different. Yeah. And it's, it's really a movie about the comprehension of um, the other kids, I would yes. say. And, and because for me, it's very important to, that we're not living in a world where everybody is the same yeah. and we are like robots, you know. Fortunately, people have different desires, different love, different identities. Yes. And this is a chance, you know. Yeah. No, I and, definitely, you, and we yeah. have to share this. Yeah. I definitely think that the film is, is very powerful in that sense and it's very empowering and it sheds light. On, on all of this very, very vividly. Um, finally, to depart a bit from the, from the film as well, I, I wanted to ask you, because you have a long history with the Teddy Award. Uh, you received multiple Teddy Awards uh, throughout your career. Uh, if you could talk a bit about your relationship with this, with this award in, in particular. Well, the Berlinale for me was always a special moment, you know, because yeah. this is the first time that I'm coming. Yes. And um, and Berlin also is a special place. I know Berlin for 20 years. I come often here. I have a lot of friends who are living here. I love this town and I love the spirit of Berlin. And so for me to come, especially with this kind of films and, and subject, you know, right. uh, these queer yeah. uh, films, yeah. Um, well, it's like I feel like home, you know. Yeah, I love that. Yes. And um, yeah, so so I'm very very happy to yeah. be here. Yeah. And I hope that the people of Berlin and, and and all I mean all the Berliners and 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 the team also of yeah. the Berlinale, you know, yeah. uh, w would love the film. Yes. Yeah. I'm sure about that. And finally, one last question that I, I wanted to ask you because you are a director that is recognized throughout the world for your contribution to queer cinema. And I'm wondering how do you see the queer cinema landscape of today with this perspective and with this prominent role that how you contributed to, to this field? Well, I'm very curious about queer films, you know, yes. I'm always uh, searching, looking for. Yes. Uh, and uh, what I really love is that now you have many countries where before it was impossible to have right. any uh, 
type of film, you know, with, with queer people. Yes. But today it's different. You see that there is a new generation um, and people take the chance, you know, uh, and the risk sometimes, you know, to do all this film and they are documenting uh, the reality of all these countries and different cultures and it's for me very, very important, you know, yeah. that it's not on, only about Europe or America. Yeah. I mean, you have gay, you have queer uh, people everywhere. Yes, it's a global thing now. And they need stories, they need films, yeah. they need uh, incarnation, you know, of who they are, you yes. know. Absolutely. The world is diverse, so we need these films. Yeah. And Berlin is very important for that because they, Berlin promote and 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 bring um, a reconnaissance, you know, yeah. of all these people and all these films. Yes. So it's very very important for yes. me. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for giving us this interview, and I wish you all the best for the rest of this year's Berlinale. Thank you so much. Thank you.